Hi and welcome. This video is going to demonstrate uh, running some reports um, from within the project editor. So uh, in previous videos we started uh, adding um, products to this project and uh, that includes um, actual products and, and labor items as well. You can see in here there's a programming labor item and um, now uh, the intent being we're going to run some reports here. Um, and you might want to jump right in and run a client proposal report to see how it looks. Um, that's always a temptation here. Come here and find the one and run it. Um, but you might want to double check yourself first. Um, just run some um, management reports. to Again, double check to make sure that everything um, is squared away here in the project. Um, a very good one to run would be the list blank items in the project. And uh, when you expand this list here, you'll see that you can run it by either install hours or by price. Uh, those are just our two default groupings here. I'm going to go ahead and choose to run this by price. And this is a very nice internal report that's going to show uh, if you're missing anything uh, important. Uh, it'll highlight those fields in, in red. In this case, uh, on a product here, we're missing a price. So there's no margin either. So we're seeing red here. I'm going to want to go back and fix that. Um, you know, sometimes you might see zero pricing if it's an owner furnished piece of equipment, but in this case, we want to charge for this. So um, we'll definitely check that out. And then you'll see a lot of red um, zeros over here for height and width. Uh, those aren't overly important fields in the software, um, unless you're doing elevation drawings in Visio or AutoCAD, but we still include those on this particular report. Um, but you're going to want to scroll through the whole thing and see uh, here's another problem down here. I can see that this. Um, product here is, is showing as unassigned, no phase, no hours. So that means labor is not being charged, uh, installation labor for that particular device. So again, running this report um, will give you that heads up and then you can go fix the issues. Um, another good double check for yourself uh, on a granular level would be the line item detail with margin. Um, if you run this, say, by location, we'll have a look at all of the products that are in this project, um, again, grouped by location, and we'll see if there's um, any problems by looking at the profit column, um, which is a dollar value profit, and then the margin percentage column. And you can see, again, if you're missing anything on a particular product right there, um, is the other piece that we saw earlier, uh, or in the last report, missing its pricing. Um, but as you can see in here, I may not notice if there's a labor problem. I, I wouldn't know that that one product wasn't charging its labor. So it's always a good idea to run a combination of, of these reports uh, to find your problems. And uh, now I'll go ahead and fix those problems. So find a product here, go to the price tab here. Uh, let's see, okay, this one is not the one that had the problem. Let's find the other Tanberg piece. So we'll go here, must've been this codec. Let's open it up and have a look here. Ah, yes, the phase is missing here, so we're going to go ahead and assign it a phase. Uh, in this case, we'll, um, it has three hours assigned to it. We'll hit save. And there was another product in here that was missing pricing. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and open this up and go to the price tab here. And oh, we'll go ahead and fix that here. And we'll just do that. Save it. I'll just add a random price here. Reset the filter. And now, of course, you could run the reports again, double check yourself, um, or you might want to run some other management reports in here, like uh, maybe a detail cost summary. This is a little less granular, but uh, let's say if we ran this by category, it will show you your uh, profit margins for both products and labor here. And again, grouped by category was the choice I um, selected. So you'll see there's a cost a price and then a, a margin percentage. So it's a good way to double to go over and uh, run some client reports here. So um, you have a client uh, reports list here. Um, in previous videos, we talked about the scope of work field. So you could uh, run this report. Uh, there's the contract we mentioned in uh, prior videos that you'll, you'll want to customize this to have your wording in it. So you should have a custom contract in this list at some point uh, when working in the software. But let's um, again, just run a quick proposal. Uh, I'm going to run this one that uh, has images, expand this list here, and we can run any um, definition that we want. Uh, the definition names indicate how they're going to group. So in this case, let's run it by location. So we'll highlight that, hit run, and have a
have a look here. So uh, this is just a standard uh, template out of our software where you've got graphic along the top. You've got a, um, a, by default, a generic house image here. But you can change this per project. I'll show you that once we review this um, report here. Your company information, uh, again, just on this cover sheet. And then uh, when you keep scrolling, uh, we did run this by location. So you can see the first location is listed here with uh, products showing. And uh, we'll just keep scrolling down. Here's the equipment closet, um, then office one, office two. At the end, you get a project subtotal for the equipment. And if you scroll a little further, you will now see that the a breakout of equipment, labor, uh, sales tax, and a grand total. And um, that is a default um, proposal inside of SI 2015. So a little bit about this too on this reports tab here. Uh, you can change that cover page image here. Um, just choose to use a specific cover page for this project and then load in the image that you want to um, use here. You can just uh, copy and paste it or if you hit add you'll be able to browse to an image if you want it to be a specific building that you're working on for this project. Uh, nice personalization um, touch there. And um, you also have the ability to add themes to your um, proposal. So um, real quickly, uh, when you have a proposal selected, <clears throat> you are able to click this image theme button here. And then you can pick from all these preset themes. They have all different looks. And we'll just you know go down here a little bit more. There's uh, different categories out here, if you will. Then we have some just, you know, solid colors with not too many graphics along the top. Let's say we want to see green here, um, green stripes. We'll save this. Uh, but before I leave, um, you can create your own custom themes here too by just clicking this button here and uh, giving it a name and uh, you'll have to create your own graphics but and, and, and enter those here and um, click this to browse to them. But we give you the dimensions on what we recommend the size be. Um, so this allows you to do some customizations to your reports um, without having to go in and actually create a custom report. You're just changing themes um, out here or possibly changing the definition. So uh, an example of that um, continuing would be, I've just chosen the theme, but before I run this report again, maybe I want to turn off line item pricing. So I'm going to edit this definition for the location. Uh, this pulls up the report definition um, interface and I'll scroll down and just uncheck show item prices. We'll go ahead and hit save and run this and so not only will I have a new look with the green graphics in this case, uh, when you scroll down through the report you'll see that there are now no item pricing displaying just group pricing. So we do have a lot of flexibility when running these reports. Before I close out of here, actually, we'll show you that you do have export options here along the top. Uh, the most common one here would be to export this to a PDF file, something that you would um, either save to the project folder or uh, at least save a copy of the PDF, um, print it and present to the client in person. Or if you're going to email them, you could, of course, save the file here or uh, even click this little um, email report icon here that will open up um, Outlook and um, attach the report to the Outlook email, you'll be able to then fill it out and send it over to the client directly.